So even if you hit the OptiBlank directly with light, it doesn't really affect it that much as it would affect a PVC. Well, now everything is gone. So if your so if your PVC is black. <laughs> If your PVC is black, then if you light off, oh, <laughs> it is really, really, really early. I don't even think they have a time for this. Going to Gran Canaria, doing uh, Don Carlos there, and um, it's still pitch black outside. So this is a perfect limping segue to talk about one of my favorite, if not my favorite, projection screen. It's uh, Garriott's. Opti Black. Why on earth are we using a black PVC to project on, while a white PVC might pick up the light far easier? Uh, that's exactly why. Because we don't want to bounce light onto my projection. So the projection has to be brilliant. For brilliance you need contrast, and for contrast you need white and black, not grey. A black PVC? For a back projection is perfect. For a front projection, you might avoid a black PVC. That's not uh, something you should try. You can. It's written in the papers. It is kind of a strong breakfast they take here. Um, oh. Awesome food. Well, the guys are unpacking. Let's just briefly talk about the black PVC that we just bought for the piece we're doing here. It's Don Carlos and it's gonna be a very dark piece. A white projection screen will always pick up a lot of light from the ambient. Lights that are actually meant for the singers on stage, but it will bounce from the floor and from everywhere else and from the costumes onto those screens. And this will make a white screen look grey and your black will then become grey, of course. Because when you're projecting, you're only projecting the whites and the bright areas. The black areas are where you're not projecting lights on. That's pretty obvious. I'm uh, preaching to the choir here, I think. And here comes our star. Laura Navarro, la jefa de todo. Hola. Hola, ¿qué tal? <laughs> ¿Qué tal tú? ¿Cómo estás? bien? Let me introduce you to one of the smaller problems in this old theater because it's a really old theater and uh, every cable has to go through... Um, which means the cables go in here and then they pass through a hole in the ground to the stage. Uh, and hopefully the signal is going through. Everything is working together like a Swiss clockwork. Everybody is really keen on finishing tonight and thank God our video technician set up the computer to watch the match. Hey, a trabajar. <laughs> Half past six and we have the unusual situation that the stage is not ready but the video is, so um, yeah. And while the guys are setting up the stage, Let's talk a bit um, projection screen 101, just the real basic basics, okay? Let's go. If this is your screen and your audience is seated in front of the screen, obviously, your projector is where the audience is, then you have a front projection and this front projection will light certain parts of the screen. Well, there is light areas in the projection, you will light the areas. And some light will of course bounce off the screen, as the screen might be glossy. If your screen is lit by a projector that is behind the screen, so we have a rear projection, the light will pass through 
and while passing through it will light certain areas as well. So we have areas that are lit by the bright portions of the image. The light passing through will be less when it's at an angle and it will be stronger when it's directly headed to the audience. And this will be the hotspot we were talking about. Right now we're looking at the, the screen and uh, the lens of the projector is around here. So this is where normally a hotspot will be built. Some, some place where you see the lamp of the projector through the projection. And this is why the OptiBlank is such a great PVC to project on, to retro project on, because you can't really see it. It distributes the light that hits the screen evenly on the surface. And it's, it, it really doesn't matter where the light hits the screen. It's not getting through directly. Um, you get the point. Still, we are lighting it with a lot of working lights right now, so let me get back to this when we set up the projection and turned off the lights. There's a huge difference between the PVCs, especially the black PVCs, in that curve of the light transmission. If you buy a show or um, Tuchler's Black Pearl, this is a PVC that is quite affordable, but at the same time offers a very steep curve of light transmission. So people at the sides of the theater will see a very dark image, while people in the middle will see a hot spot in the middle. The speciality of the Opti Black is a very even distribution of the light of your image. So you have a very even image, which is a little brighter in the middle, but not really recognizable. Of course, that will drop a little the overall light transmission. Your image is getting darker, but today's projectors are pretty able to cope with that. Here we have a very special case. Our screens are in a 45 degree angle to the audience. So already here, I would have a huge hotspot somewhere or some uneven distribution if I use some cheaper PVC. So it's a um, good investment to buy the OptiBlack, which is of course a little more expensive, but as this is not an advertisement and not a sponsored video, I can talk about prices as much as I want. You will still order it at Gerriet's. Um, I'll link them below. Try out the PVCs they sell. They're pretty good. I'm totally biased because I love Gerriet's products, so um, sorry for that. So here they are, two huge screens of um, OptiBlack PVC. Uh, this is the Fondo de Sena, well, the scene background. And I'm gonna provide the imagery for these two huge things. Everything's happening in front of these two screens. All the lights are happening in front of these two screens. So all the lights will bounce from the ground to the screens and, uh, well, this is diff this is difficult to, to, to show. But the lights will jump from the ground to the screens. And you don't want that. If this guy here, Chema Fernandez, our light designer, um, messes up with the lights, he can't touch my screens because they are black. Of course there is a tull in front at the Bocadura where the opening of the stage is. We put a tull and then we create the illusion of something happening just in between. Holographic projections in Gran Canaria. And now already you see why a good PVC is black. Uh, we have these screens here made of truck PVC, glossy stuff. Uh, they are catching a lot of light. And then we have the OptiBlack that doesn't catch any light.
Our stage designer Carlos decided to have the whole stage covered with this rubber, rubber, rubber. Yeah. Lorena is our prop master and she's preparing the props for a piece full of death. Starting with the first rehearsal with orchestra and everything and having a first look at the real life presentation on the OptiBlack today. So uh, maybe take some photos, maybe just busy. Th those headphones are really confusing. Um, they call it a party line. Dentro memoria, prevenidos para bajar tool, prevenida memoria 5.5, prevenido video punto 5.5, en la misma orden. Y cuando el tool esté en marca suelo, QE 5.5. Go. Vamos. Cuando toque suelo, QE 5.5. Ok, Laura. Now, it's time for breakfast. It's the classical breakfast here. It's um, patita and coffee, which is pig leg from the oven and, um, well, black coffee, obviously. The perks of being uh, the stand-in for the light rehearsals, uh, you can actually explain what the PVC is about. I'm pretty well lit and uh, as this is black cloth, they can't touch me. My projection withstands every attempt to put light on it. So if you want a strong back projection and you're in an opera house, I suggest you use a black PVC like this one. But there's one drawback in producing a black PVC. If you don't want the light to be cut off too much, you have to make it really thin. Uh, and this is where a hot spot comes in. Hot spots build up where the material is too thin and you can see the lamp through. So um, I'm now looking straight into the projector and you can't see a real hot spot. You also have to create an image that is supporting this um, hot spot avoidance. But um, as you can see, there is no real hot spot. The OptiBlank is produced in a manner that distributes the light properly and doesn't give you a hot spot. You can't see the lamp through this screen. Me pasa un poco. ¿Dónde estoy? ¿Para ahí? ¿Para allá? ¿Dónde? ¿Para allá? Aquí. Pero dímelo. Pero que no lo veo desde fuera. Ah, bueno. <laughs> claro, el rey se queda aquí, el rey viene y guarda. Y guarda. That's the beauty of that material. You don't really see anything. Look at this blackness. There is a front and a back to this PVC. The back is a little more glossy, uh, which you have to account to when you talk about a hot spot. And, and the front is uh, a little structured, so you can not see the gloss as an audience. The folds vanish as soon as the PVC is warmed up by light or anything else. Anyways, you have a bar in here, in this pocket, and that bar is not translucent. So you're gonna lose anyway, a piece like that. So keep it elevated a little, not too much. Actually, this is too much. We're gonna lower it for another centimeter. So keep it elevated one centimeter above the ground. So the bar stretches the PVC and if you want to get it, it will attach a skirt here to cover the light so no light goes through. What we did here is we actually pulled up the screen a little to have the bar stretch the PVC. Uh, it's not touching the ground so to prevent it from moving we put some blocks here but always put some styrofoam around. You might notice a slight tint. That tint is um, kind of brownish, warm tint. Take that into account if you're creating for projections on the Black. But um, anyways, it's not that bad. 
So you might notice that my mapping is a little off. That's not a problem because as always when we show things to people who are far away, like in this case like 20 meters away from the projection screen, you will put a mask on it and make it look nice on the edges so you have an edge, soft edge. Well, I, how, how do you call this in? What's, what's the proper name for this in, in English? Well, a, a soft edge and you soften out with a degrado and um, the image should fit fine. So let's go front of house and switch through all our cues and see if all the videos are in their place. It's uh, five minutes until we start and there's a lot of people here. So let's hope for the best. Knock on wood. Gotta say something. You guys at the Opera de las Palmas, which is just a few people pushing a huge rock every year with a new temporada, the season for the operas. You guys are amazing. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. It was an amazing time. It was an, a pleasure and an honor to be with you. Uh, un placer enorme y un honor trabajar con vosotros. Uh, un gran equipo. See you next time, I guess. Yeah, well, while there is still sunlight out to um, enjoy this wonderful day in Madrid, uh, I'm not gonna edit anything. Perhaps consider subscribing to this channel if you are into technology or things like that. And um, I'll see you next time.